A joint assessment by the Asia-Pacific Group reports that Pakistan's compliance to act against eight terror groups, including the Jaish e Mohammed and Lashkar e Taiba, has been unsatisfactory. The assessment report, which was recently shared with Islamabad, is based on last month's APG joint group meeting in Guangzhou, where Pakistan presented its case and provided details of all the actions it had taken in compliance with FATF directions. In response to Pakistan's unsatisfactory submissions, the report rebuffed Islamabad for its dereliction to FATF's directions and asked it to take substantial action against terror groups or it will soon land into blacklist of FATF when the anti-terror funding organization will sit for its final meeting in September. We bring you a report. Islamabad's bankrupt situation is on the verge of getting even worse owing to its continuous terror funding. In a recent assessment report, the International Terror Funding Watchdog Financial Action Task Force has cleared Pakistan on only two of 27 action plans it was supposed to complete to escape its embarrassing and prolonged stay in the grey list of FATF. The first meeting of the FATF in Orlando has passed strictures against Pakistan that they have not acted against the way they wanted to, against Jesse Mother, uh, Jamaat Udullah, and therefore, on the financial aspects of those groups, they have not taken full action. There's going to be a final meeting, they're in the grey list, and there is very likelihood that if they do not react, World Bank is also telling them to reduce their defence expenditure, they have not done it. The FATF has also put restrictions on them. There is every likelihood that Pakistan may go into the blacklist. When it goes into the blacklist, all finances to all these organizations will be frozen. Lots of Pakistani money will, will be frozen abroad by all the countries which have got this money. It will be a big blow to Pakistan. Pakistan, which already features in the grey list of Financial Action Task Force, is under immense global pressure to act against terrorism and its funders. The review on the implementation of the FATF action plan held in February 2019 did not go well, which has increased pressure on Pakistan. In April 2019, the Financial Action Task Force asked Pakistan to reassess the operation of banned terrorist outfits in the country, while simultaneously directing it to implement a new set of constraints in its crackdown against terror funding, including documenting and regulating all gold markets. The number of Islamics around the world are generous to fund for the Islamic. Saudi Arabia also funds a lot of money to various organizations in the form of religion, madrasas. But actually that money has gone into terrorism. Therefore, the effect of this is going to be possibly on all these groups to stop their terrorist activities. Saudi Arabia is a big donor. Muslim countries are big donors. Individual rich people also make donors because they think they're doing it for religion. But actually, it has got channeled, and FATF is finding that out now, after India suffered, that this money, which is going to help the religion, religious teaching in madrasas, etc., is now finally known that it's going into terrorism. Several FATF reports in the past have revealed that Pakistan's primary sources of funding include foreign funding, drug trafficking, kidnapping for ransom, extortion and bank robbery. Even though the country is facing major cash crunch and is on the verge of getting blacklisted in the terror financing list of FATF, still it is the hub of all the possible criminal activities with terrorism on the top of the list. If FATF blacklists Pakistan, it will be a blow to their economy, it will be a blow to the entire economy of Pakistan as unreliable, as not being able to part of it. And already, Pakistan is in a bad economic state. I think the dollar today is 180 rupees per dollar. Pakistan is suffering. But of course, it's got China quietly backing it. And World Bank may give it a loan because it's given it conditions that if you need $6 billion from the World Bank. But FATF blacklisting is unique in this part of the world. And it will definitely have a very, very severe effect on the economy and the morale of Pakistan. 
In the past, Pakistan's actions against terror groups have been nothing more than just a token as Islamabad is doing all it can to avoid being downgraded to the blacklist. The FATF currently comprises 36 members with voting powers and two regional organizations representing most of the major financial center in all parts of the globe. Pakistan has been on FATF's grey list for terror financing since June 2018, but this is not the first time the country is under watch. It was grey listed from year 2008 to 2010 and then from 2012 to 2015, 